What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to learning Roblox Studio Series and today we are going to be going over the apply surface images chapter within the modeling course. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it, make sure you guys hit the like button, also hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me or gain access to a lot of the scripts that I make my other videos, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go ahead and check it out. With that being said, let's get into it. So applying surface images, all primitive parts in Roblox block cylinders, spears, and wedges have surfaces, and you can use textures or decals to apply an image to a chosen surface. Whether you choose a texture or decal depends on the following. A texture repeats both horizontally and vertically across the entire surface. The size of each tile can be modified and even offset. Decal. A decal stretches across the entire surface, meaning its appearance depends on the surface size. Creating textures or decals. Both textures and decals can be added to a part as follows. Let's go into the studio, and you can load up whatever game or world you want to then when you're inside of the workspace let's go ahead and click plus and you can go ahead and add a brand new part and we can focus to the part by hitting f and then it moves our camera right to that now in the explorer we're going to go ahead hover over the part click the plus icon and we can select either texture or decal let's go ahead and hit texture then we want to hover over the part and we can click on a face which is basically the side of the part that we actually want to apply the texture to what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply to the top face or the face that's up here so let's go ahead and click that applying the image. To apply an image to the texture or decal, click on its texture property in the properties window and select an image you've uploaded to Roblox. So now inside of the texture, we have a pro we have all the properties down here because we already have it selected and we can easily just search up texture and now we see the texture property. So now we can insert a URL, which let's go into our toolbox and just search up images. So let's just say circle and maybe that could kind of give us a decent texture. Okay, this red circle is decent enough. So let's go ahead, copy the asset ID and then we're going to paste it into the this URL right here. And just like that, it generates a full texture link for us. And now we can actually see the texture now appears on this part. Changing the surface. Once created, a texture or decal can be applied to a specific surface by setting its face property to back, bottom, front, left, right, or top. So let's go ahead and click decal. And then let's search for the face property. And now we can see we can change it from top to bottom. And now it appears on that side. We could even change it from bottom to front. And that's the front. And we can change it to all the different sides that we want. Although I'm going to set it back to the top. And there we go. Sizing slash position. As noted above, the primary difference between textures and decals is how the image is sized and positioned on the surface. For decals, the image will be stretched across the entire surface, but for textures, the image size can be controlled via the studs per tile U and studs per tile V properties. So let's go into the properties and let's just search up per tile. So we see both of these properties right next to each other. And there we go. Let's also actually, let's go ahead and stretch the part out a little bit more. So that's just kind of a bit bigger. And now let's go back to the texture and find those properties once again, which actually they're right here. They're in appearance. They're really easy to see. So let's change studs per tile U to five. And now we can see that the circles actually got much larger and let's change the studs per tile V to five as well. And now we can see that the texture has basically gotten a lot larger and basically you can increase the size and this will help when when you actually increase how large the part is so if we have a small part like let's actually make this a lot smaller we probably want the pattern to appear a lot smaller so we see a lot more circles so we can go back into the studs per and we can just set both of these to one and now we see there is a lot more circles and we have a much better pattern forming with this texture. So you can play around with those stud properties and kind of adjust them how you want until you find a nice looking pattern or however you want it to look. Additionally, textures can be offset with the offset studs U and offset studs V property, giving you more control over texture placement and even animation. Tint and transparency. Both decals and textures support a color tint and transparency setting via their color three and transparency properties respectively. Let's hit color three. And now what we could do is sort of just this slider to make them brighter or darker and kind of tint it. We can also use the transparency as well and we can sort of adjust this a little bit to make them look a little bit different as well. Of course these things all look very basic and simple and you might be wondering well how will I actually use this in game? When you learn much more about building and getting into the textures and everything like that you can actually use some of these settings or some of these things such as textures to make like real life looking grass inside of your game. It's hard to explain but there's a lot of cool things that you can do with these and use these for but of course this is just just a very basic demonstration and showing you just sort of how to get introduced to these things. With that being said though, that's it for this episode. Hopefully this video did help you guys out. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn the post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go ahead and check it out and support me. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode.